Hello and welcome to Connecting You to You Radio, where we tune in to receive the messages of health and well-being that are being broadcast from the soul. I'm your host, Lisa Warner, author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing. I show you how to heal your body naturally by combining your body's innate intelligence with the wisdom of your own soul so that you can break through the mental programming of limiting beliefs that cause disease and make healing your body and changing your life simple. Welcome. Welcome to another Lunch with Lisa. I'm Lisa Warner. I am the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing. Today, let's talk about the connection between physical, mental, and emotional health and why we cannot separate the three of those things. So when I found myself facing cancer, I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that my emotional state was directly contributing to my physical state of dis-ease. At the time, I was extremely depressed. I was having anxiety attacks on the regular. I was my self-esteem had hit rock bottom. I was struggling with life. And it was absolutely obvious to me that if I wasn't struggling with life, that everything would be completely different, that my state of health would be far better. I knew that all of the stress and anxiety and uh, you know the constant worry about money, all of that was taking its toll on my physicality. So when I was looking at the physicality, I was like, well, if this is cancer, then the pre-paved pathway is, well, you got chemo, radiation, pharmaceuticals, you know, uh, radical surgery. Well, none of those options appealed to me in any way, shape, or form. And it was completely clear to me that none of those options was going to address the mental and emotional imbalances that I was experiencing. In fact, it was quite clear to me that they would actually add to the problem. Because from my perspective, when, you know, if, if everybody, you know, if I was playing into that game, then I was going to be subject to those rules. And when I looked at others who had gone through, you know, chemo and radiation or radical surgery, like I saw that it was a really difficult pathway for most of those people. And, you know, that difficult pathway seemed way too difficult. <laughs> it seemed really, really, really scary to me. And inherently i i knew that healing shouldn't be scary and i realized that because you know chemo was certainly not going to help me with you know balance rebalance my emotional state or you know address the the mental thought processes I knew that that was not the pathway to healing. It was completely clear to me that we are souls first and foremost. And as the soul, there is nothing wrong with us. 
when I was a very little girl, I would have these experiences of just being in harmony with all of creation. I would find myself in this space of unconditional love and light. And it was clear that that is the eternal space of being. That is where we come from. And it's where we return to after we leave these physical bodies. And from that space, I could turn around and I could look at the earth and go, wow, there is something seriously amiss on this planet. I could see the amnesia. I could see that humans had forgotten their divinity. They had forgotten that they are divine beings of light and love. And that when we live in harmony with each other, this earth is like a paradise. But that's not what's been going on here on this planet. I could see at two and three years old that this was a soul prison. It was completely obvious to me. It wasn't completely obvious to me why I had been sent to the soul prison. <laughs> I thought that I was here sent as a prisoner. I didn't realize that I was one to here to help break down the walls of those prisons, to help set humanity free, to help restore the divine design, to help bring unconditional love back to this planet. So when I found myself facing cancer, for me, I knew that returning to my original state of unconditional love and light, the state of mastery was where the healing was going to actually occur. It was clear to me that I had to remember how to be the masterful soul that I am. It was clear that I had to clear out all of those thought patterns, all of those um, patterns of lack and limitation and I'm not good enough and there's something wrong with me, those thought patterns and all of the emotions of fear and doubt and anxiety and guilt and shame, all of that that was weighing me down, clearing those things out was the path to healing. It was obvious to me. So once I finally, you know, I, my, my, my path to healing for me, instead of going to the doctor, I went inside. I went into the masterful divine intelligence within. I started to reconnect to God, source, creator, to the all that is, to this space of infinite well-being. And I started to ask the question, what do I need to know about this in order for it to change? And one day as I was sitting in meditation, my perception flipped. And instead of looking from the eyes of my human and all the physical stuff, suddenly I was looking through the eyes of my soul and I saw something completely different than what my limited human was able to see. And what my soul saw was that, hey, Lisa, your body's functioning exactly the way it's designed to function. There's nothing wrong with your body. Your body is responding to the input you're providing. And the input that I was providing was, oh my gosh, I'm not okay. There's not enough money. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to be, you know, oh, what's wrong with me? All of these thought patterns, all of these belief systems that I had been taught, all of these emotional traumas that I was carrying inside the fear, the doubt, the anxiety, the guilt, the shame. 
that's what my body was responding to. That was, those were the energies that I was feeding my physical body. What we feed our bodies is not just food or food-like substances, as the case may be these days. It's also the thoughts that we think and the emotions that we feel. So our ability to regulate our own health is directly dependent upon our ability to manage our thoughts and our emotions, both of which are energy. It was when I started to see things in terms of energy that I made some real progress. I started to understand that my emotions were energies and that I could easily clear out energies from my energy field. It was far more difficult to try to figure out how to let go of fear or how to let go of anxiety. But once I understood that fear and anxiety are energies, and I am master of all energies, just as you are master of all energies. I started to notice the energies and I started to gather them up and I started to clear them out of my energy field. I started to transmute those energies. And I started to notice that those energies, anxiety, doubt, guilt, shame, they were all attached to thought patterns. I have anxiety because I have trouble with money. Like I had anxiety and money connected. So every time I felt anxious, I started looking at the lack in my bank account and I started loop and it was a loop. I kept looping and looping and looping, feeling anxiety and going, oh my God, if I had money, I wouldn't feel like this. And then looking at my bank account and going, oh my God, right? Those two things are locked together. But as soon as I started clearing energies out of my energy field, you know what happened? Those thought patterns started clearing out of my energy field. And I started to realize, oh my gosh, I've been caught in some loops. And as soon as I started to see things in terms of energy, I was able to start breaking the loops. I was able to stop those looping cycles. And when I started to be able to manage my emotional state, the way I felt, I started to realize, hey, I can choose how I feel. I can literally choose to feel happy in any moment, literally just like that. Smile comes right up on my face. I just feel really good inside instantly. I can feel serious. I can feel anxious, but I choose not to. I choose to feel good. I choose to feel happy. I choose to feel well in my being. And when I choose happy and I choose to feel well within my being, my thoughts, start to match those emotions. And I start to think better quality thoughts. When I feel gratitude, when I feel beauty, you can feel beauty. If you look out in the world at nature, there is spectacular beauty. If you just look for it, 
and there's a feeling to beauty. And when I started practicing feeling better quality feelings, the better quality thought patterns came with those better feelings. And the better I felt, the better I felt in my physical body. As soon as I realized that my body was responding to my thoughts and my emotions, and that those negative thoughts and emotions were feeding the dis-ease in my body and my those those thoughts and the emotions that I'm not okay, there's something wrong with me, there's not enough, I don't know what to do. There, all of those, my body was reflecting those. Those distorted thought patterns, those, no, those thought patterns are never, ever, ever true. They're always illusions because we are souls first and foremost. We are non-physical beings. We are eternal beings, souls who have come into physical form to experience physicalness. And the physicalness that we experience, whether it's the physicalness of our body, the physicalness of our wallets, our bank accounts, whether it's the physicalness of a relationship, any relationship that we have with others, the relationship with, that we have with life itself, all of those things get reflected in our physical bodies. So when we tell the story of, I'm not okay, I'm afraid, there's not enough, there's something wrong with me, our bodies have to reflect those thought patterns because the body's job is to represent who we our being, how we are perceiving ourselves. And when we are perceiving, I'm not okay, there's something wrong with me, I don't fit in, I don't have enough, I don't know what to do. The body starts to distort itself because those are distorted thought patterns. We cannot separate the physical, mental, and emotional bodies or the etheric body, the Christed body, any of the other bodies that we have. We've only been taught that we have one body. That's not true. We have many other non-physical layers of ourselves. I teach that it's like a Russian stacking doll. The physical body is like the littlest doll in the center. Every other doll, there's an emotional body, a mental body, a, a Christed body, all different kinds of bodies. And all of these other selves are the higher, well, not all of them, the physical, the mental and emotional bodies are directly connected to the physical body. There's the higher self that exists beyond those layers. The higher intelligence, the divine intelligence of our soul. And when the lower bodies, the more dense bodies are thinking thoughts and feeling feelings that don't correlate to what the soul feels, or sees or perceives, the soul is literally divine intelligence, universal intelligence, infinite well-being. The soul exists in states of peace and ease and harmony and joy, curiosity, 
that is our permanent self, the soul. But when our consciousness has fallen and now we are we have a, a microscopic view and we're only looking at ourselves, the physical body, the physical stuff that we see around us. And what we see around us is mostly what we're shown. And what we're shown on TV and in movies and throughout the social media and we're shown, oh my gosh, it's not okay. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. We're shown this repeatedly every day on the news, bad news after bad news after bad news, fear, fear, more fear. And when we pay attention to that and we're focused on that, that becomes our reality. We become immersed in that negative reality. And it's not real. It's not a re actual reality. The actual reality is the universal harmony. Nature is natural. It's the natural reality. Nature provides everything we need. But we've been taught that the false matrix supply, re, supplies everything we need. That some job, some employer, you know, some paycheck is what we need to survive. The government provides for us. Yeah. Provides war, provides taxation, pro provides all kinds of great things. All sorts of rules that limit our ability to thrive. That limit our ability to travel this beautiful planet. We have to see who's providing what. <laughs> and then what we provide for our physical body in the form of thought patterns and feelings directly dictates our health. So we are in a state of separation at this point where body mind and soul have been separated the body is looked after looked after by the doctors and the medical model the soul is looked after by the church the mind is shaped by the educational system You can't separate these things. And this is why all of these systems have to change. We can no longer live in a fallen state of consciousness. We can no longer live under the divide and conquer strategy. We have all been divided from the inside out. And we have been conquered by the darkness by the fear, the doubt, the guilt, the shame, the blame, the war, the poverty, the mass destruction. <laughs> right? We're living under this weight of the distortions, but we don't need to. And it's up to each and every one of us to learn how to heal ourselves. And healing ourselves is not just about healing our bodies. It's about healing all of our bodies, healing the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body, clearing our auric field and restoring our divine architecture, the architecture of our divine consciousness, the light body, the, the energy that is ours, the shape of our soul, our own sacred geometry each and every one of us just like our bodies are different from each other everybody's body looks different from everybody else even if you're an identical twin there's still differences right every body is unique just like every soul is unique 
And as the soul, we have a unique sacred ge geometrical structure. But when we come into these physical bodies, that sacred structure that is always around us in the form of our auric field, that structure starts to degrade and we start to receive less and less light from the divine. We start to receive less and less divine intelligence. We start receiving diminished amounts of living life force energy. And with every thought pattern of I'm not okay, we're giving away our precious life force energy to an illusion. We cannot be not okay. It's impossible. It's impossible for there to be anything wrong with the souls that we are. So healing, it's not just about our physical bodies. It's about learning how to manage our energy, learning how to create a beautiful, balanced, stable energy field to create an emotional and mental environment within which we can thrive, within which our physical bodies can thrive. We cannot separate mental, emotional, and physical health. They are directly interconnected. What happens in one affects the others. And this is why the medical model is deeply flawed, because it doesn't look at the mental and emotional components of health. Or, God forbid, the spiritual components of our health. We are spirit, souls in physical bodies. All of that gets overlooked when the doctors are looking only at the physical body. So your health is up to you and you are a grand being of light and you have all the tools you need already built in to manage your own health, your mental health, your emotional health and your physical health your spiritual health, the health of your soul, the health of all of who you are. You have the ability to manage that. And you are the only one who has the ability to manage that because you are the only one who knows how you feel and what thought patterns are running through your mind. You are the only one who can notice those things. You are the only one who can change those things. And change those things you can. And it's not difficult. In fact, it can actually be very simple. But it takes a shift of perspective. Are you willing to allow yourself to see from a different perspective? Are you willing to allow yourself to see rather than from a physical perspective? Are you willing to see from an energy perspective? Are you willing to see the unseen? Are you willing to see the invisible world? Which is 99% of all that is, is non-physical which means we don't see it with our physical eyes. So it can be invisible. Are you willing to see the invisible? Are you willing to make the invisible visible so that you can manage your own health and well-being? 
so that you can bring your health and vitality back so that you can restore your own sacred geometry. Your sacred geometry is yours. The fact that you have been subjected to all kinds of trauma and drama and your sacred geometry has been distorted by traumas and dramas. That's not your fault, but it is your responsibility to restore your own geometry. If you need assistance restoring your sacred geometry, this is how I heal myself. This is how I do it. There are many, many, many ways. Eight billion people on this planet, eight billion different ways. But there are some things that are very basic. So managing your energy field is a basic skill. Managing your mental and emotional states are basic skills that were never taught. So if you'd like to learn these skills, I offer classes. I have a knowledge share area that's in, in my free private membership area. You can sign up for free if you'd like to join my private membership. It is free. I actually give away a couple of uh, bonuses just for signing up. And once you become a member, then you have access to the courses that are in there. You can purchase any of the courses that I've got. I've got three so far, and there will be many, many more added as the months go by. And that is also where you can um, work with me directly. So if you are looking for private guidance or I will have a 12-week um, course starting in uh, September, so if you would like to be part of that, that's where you'll find it is inside the private membership area. And to find that, just go to go.connectingyou2you.com. If you're watching, when you, as you're watching this if, or listening to this on the podcast, just check the show notes and the links will be there. So I hope this was helpful to you today. You know, we cannot separate physical, mental, and emotional health. They all go together. One, what happens in one influences the other two, and it can be no other way. So I wish you all of the best of health, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. <laughs> you have the ability to be as healthy and vital and happy as you choose to be. It's all within your command. Hope this was helpful. Until next time, create for yourselves some amazing things. You can. Hmm. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to this episode of Connecting You to You Radio. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Are you ready to discover more about how simple healing your body can actually be when you do it from the higher wisdom of your soul? To learn more about what I do and how you can work with me, visit connectingyou2you.com and get on my mailing list to be the first to know about my latest offerings. If you'd like to interact with me on Facebook, please join my group, Soul Sourced Healing. Check the show notes below for these links and more. I hope to see you again next time on Connecting You to You Radio.